Kasi of Roses Greenery. I am a plantita from Quezon City, Philippines. Welcome to my channel. First, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all the support for the past uh, months. We've reached 20K recently lang. So, thank you so much for everything, for all the support. I do really appreciate it. I promise you I'm gonna continue helping out the plant community we have here in the Philippines. Wow. And I promise you that I'm gonna continue showcasing around the world the beautiful plants we have here. Wow. So again, thank you so much. By the way, I have my social media accounts here. You could follow me and tag me with your plant puzzle so you could get featured on my stories. Also, please hit that subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would really appreciate it. <laughs> For today's episode, it's just gonna be a quick video about this plant because I've been getting a lot of uh, care tips requests ever since I uh, featured her on my previous uh, videos and after I posted her on my IG feed. And she's also the plant that I'm gonna save in case of, you know, fire or end of the world. <laughs> I've had this plant for a little more than a year now. I got her last year, October, from Horti Filipina in BGC. And let's try to go back to that uh, video where I featured her so you would have an idea how she looked like when I got her. This beautiful Philodendron Gloriosa, she's like the alocasia Fredek. She has dark green velvety leaves. She has creamy white veins holding together this big heart-shaped leaf. I just hope I can make her happy and will thrive on me. Really pretty, isn't she? And now here she is. Look. Meet my Philodendron Glory also. <laughs> Here she is. Um, she currently has 13, 13 leaves. Imagine I got her from six leaves and may a couple of uh, leaves na na that's before. So I had, and she continues to, you know, give me leaves every time. And this leaf, uh, this is a newly unfurled leaf, like few days ago lang, look. And super big siya. Look at my hand. So, ganyan siya. Yung kalaki yung leaves niya. <laughs> Just look at her size, di ba? <laughs> okay, baba muna natin siya. By the way, this is our new dog. <laughs> this is Chili. Say hi, Chili. Say hi. <laughs> Teka, ibaba ko lang. Wait lang, ha? Okay. Here's Chili. Pepper is outside, so she's lang yung dito muna. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Tabi mo natin siya dito. There. Yan. So I've also been asked what's the difference between Gloriosum and the Glorious. Basically, Glorious is a hybrid of this Gloriosum and the Melanochrysum. Glorious leaves are much longer and narrower compared to this uh, gloriosum for the gloriosum uh, they're kind of you know medio wide yung leaves nya and also shorter also with the petioles or yung stem uh, you'll be able to tell through the stem right here yung petiole nya yung petiole ni uh, glorious rounded lang siya as in circular form lang siya Compared to this Gloriosum, yung baba niya, yung bottom part ng petiole niya, it is rounded. But pagdating sa dulo, uh, you would feel na medyo nag-flatten na dito. So, I've read that it's in the form of letter D. So, here as you could see, if you'll notice, medyo flat na yung petiole niya pagdating dun sa dulo near the leaves. I also had someone send me a picture of a juvenile form of Glorious. Mukha din siya kasi glory also. So, I told her maybe we could wait for a little while kapag lumaki na and see how the baby plant grows. And the Glorious, she's also one of my wishlist plants. So, hopefully I can find, you know, an affordable one. <laughs> so, how do I care for this plant? 
Disclaimer, I'm not a plant expert. I'm just a plant enthusiast. So I'm gonna describe to you based on how I take care of her. In terms of light, I keep her in my roof deck garden. She's been there ever since day one I brought her home. She gets direct morning sunlight for about an hour or two every morning. She can tolerate medium light, but for better growth, keep her in a bright spot. Keep her away from direct sunlight after 10 a.m. Alam nyo naman kung ganong kainit dito sa Pilipinas, else her foliage may burn. Also, if you'll notice, uh, the leaves are facing only on one side since I keep her in a corner spot. So they tend to face towards the light. Now, if you want to spread out evenly the leaves, try to turn around her pot all the time. Ganyan. Para mas balance yung leaves nila, hindi yung naka face lang sa one side, just like mine. Since she's exposed to a lot of strong wind up in her shaded roof deck, she gets dry fast. And if it's sunny, it's really hot and dry up there. So with her, I water her lightly every other day or almost every day. I keep her medium moist since she dries up pretty fast. So if you keep her indoors that doesn't get a lot of wind and hindi ganong kainet, then you're gonna have to water her less than I do. So this is my watering can. I only filled up one fourth of it. Then, ito na yung pinandidil ko sa kanya. In terms of humidity, well, I don't spray on her leaves. I don't mist her leaves. I used to when she was few months old with me. I stopped misting her leaves to prevent fungal infection. And mahirap na kapag velvety leaves, I feel like uh, mas prone siya sa fungal infection. Since I don't mist on her leaves, I would say she's not that sensitive in terms of uh, humidity. Plus, I water her often lightly, right? So she doesn't really need a lot of help in terms of humidity. But few months back, uh, when the direction of the sun changed, when the sun hits her more than two hours now in the morning, I started putting those containers with pebbles and rocks and water to help contain the humidity on that spot. In terms of medium or soil, well, I've never repotted this plant ever since I got her. Currently, she's in a peat moss and her pot, it's a plastic pot with lots of holes underneath. So for your medium, if you're gonna repot her, it should be well draining and provide her lots of aeration. You could use your normal arid mixture. As for me, for my arid mix, I use cocoa peat, fresh rice hull, I also add vermicast and pumice or perlite, whatever is available, plus lots of uh, cocoa chips cubes. Sometimes I also add carbonized rice hull if available. And I also gave her charcoal. Ayon yung mga cubes na yan, nakita nyo. Just use the grilling charcoal that you see sa uh, local grocery store and sa wet market natin. Yung mga nasa plastic lang, which you can buy for about 10 pesos to 15 pesos or 25, ganyan. Use the fresh one or yung bago lang. Hindi yung gamit na sa barbecue, okay? <laughs> and also, if you're watching from abroad, especially from the US, usually ang nakita natin is yung mga nakapak na uh, charcoal. Please do not use that. Uh, they already have added chemicals for longer burning capacity. Try to look for horticultural charcoal. You have that in Amazon. But if you're from here to the Philippines, ang bili nyo lang is yung mga naka-plastic lang na walang tatak sa groceries natin or sa wet market. Yun, idiretso na yung sa lupa. Mas maganda rin na isama nyo siya sa pag-repot nyo. Yung ilagay nyo sa ilalim. Or pwede rin maglagay kayo sa ibabaw. But for me, since hindi ko pa siya na-repot, I just added it on top. So anyways, what's the benefit of having charcoal on your plants? I've read that adding charcoal to soil helps produce bigger leaves and it helps the fertilizer to work more efficiently. 
And when you're potting this plant, make sure yung at least half ng stem naka exposed. You do not want to bury the whole stem underneath the soil, else it may rot. Make sure you have the top exposed to also help the new leaves grow. In terms of fertilizer, I've always used Osmo Code for this one. It's the most uh, beginner-friendly fertilizer for your plants. It is a slow-release fertilizer. So the way it works, you just add it to your plant. And as time goes by, uh, whenever you water your plant, it's nababasa siya. Unti-unti na natanggal yung cover niya. Thus, releasing the nutrients inside. So for this one, I give her a scoop every two months. Uh, depende, if wala na ako nakikitang uh, osmocote. I also use the balance one. 14, 14, 14 for the NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. You could also use the fertilizer with higher nitrogen because that's what I've used on her early this year. And so far, wala siya naging problema. But to be safe and for your other plants as well, uh, just use the balance one. In terms of propagation, you could simply do a stem cutting for this one. But for her, ayoko mo nang madisturb yung growth niya. Super happy pa siya, ayoko mo madisturb yung happiness niya. So I just let her be. This is her new leaf. Look, malaki siya. Kapag root bound na masyado yung plant, it will produce uh, smaller leaves. Eh. But so far, ito, it's one of the biggest leaves she's uh, ever grew on me. But definitely, I will give you updates on my IG stories. If ever I decide to, you know, propagate her, I might probably, you know, have a cutting or two as a giveaway in case, you know, we reach 25K before end of the year, hopefully. <laughs> In terms of pests or insects, I've never had any issues with this plant. Wow. Never ko pa siya nakitaan ng millibug or spider mites on her, which is normal na sa akin dito, spider mites and also millibugs. I assure you, you could sleep peacefully at night if you ever have this plant. So that's pretty much it for today's episode. I hope you guys learned something new today. And you know, if you have plans of uh, getting a gloriosum and still having second thoughts, I hope I change your mind. Again, she's one of the easiest uh, plants I've taken care of and you could sleep peacefully at night without thinking of issues about this one. And also if you got other tips on how you take care of your gloriosum, just share your tips below through the comment section and also if you've got questions you know what to do through the comment section as well and yes if you like this video please hit on like and also do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one bye yours